Well, good morning. Today is the 5th of July, the day after Independence Day, and the first Tuesday in July, so good to have you with me this morning. I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor at Grace Lutheran in New Albany, Indiana. The uh, title for our meditation today is The Green Season. And the reading for today, I'm going to read this right from the scriptures here. This is out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, St. Paul talking. And he says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants, through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace of God was given to me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than that one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So we are in the green season. That those Technically, it's the non-festival portion of the year. Um, when it gets announced at church, it'll be, you know, the second Sunday after Pentecost, the third Sunday after Pentecost, the tenth Sunday, the 16th Sunday, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. It is almost half a year of green pyramids up on the altar. And Pastor Woods and I, <clears throat> we always tease each other a little bit about, oh man, we're going to be in green forever. You know, it's, it's all the way until November when we finally get to the first Sunday of Advent and we go blue. But up until then, most every Sunday, every week will be green and it's the green season. Now, traditionally in the church, these Sundays after Pentecost are a season of growth and teaching. And so you'll see in the readings that we talk about, we'll talk about Christ and his miracles. We'll talk about Christ and his teaching. We'll talk about those things that are important for us as the people of God and as we grow. So it's a season for growing. So oftentimes the sermons will have a more of a teaching aspect rather than proclamation, which, you know, we get into Advent season, pastor and I will proclaim the coming of the Christ. And when we get into Christmas season, we proclaim that the Christ has come. And when we get into the, into the Epiphany season, it's all about that Christ beginning to be revealed and people, more and more people seeing there's something about this Jesus. And then we get into Lenten season, and Lent is all about walking with Jesus to that cross in Jerusalem. And then to the Easter season, it's the proclamation of the resurrection is at the top of our list. But once we get past Pentecost and we get into those Sundays after Pentecost, then the focus shifts some, and it, and it begins to be about growing. I grew up on a farm, and in the spring of the year, you know, when finally the farmers could get out in the field and they could till and they could plant, a real joy for any farmer and any gardener, as many of you know, it's not so much in the labor of the tilling and the planting. And, and, and of course, there's joy in the harvest, but it's in the growth that you see. You know, when you plant those pea seeds and you see the first sprouts come out of the ground, it's the first green you often see in your garden. Um, for the farmers where I grew up, it was sugar beets. They're the first things that are planted. They're planted when the ground is still pretty cold. And so you start to see the rows. See, that, that's always the exciting thing when you can look and see the rows. So they plant the sugar beets. 
and after that they plant corn, and after that they plant soybeans and dry beans, and, and you start to see the rows, you see the things coming up, and, and then, you know, pretty soon they're four inches high, six inches high, and the old the old rag was always, you know, knee high by the 4th of July was what you looked for with the corn. Now, I think the corn now is chest high by 4th of July, but, um, but for the farmer, it was seeing growth, seeing, and, it, and for me as a gardener, I love it when I look out and I, and each week, you know, the tomato plants are taller, the spinach is up. And now, right now, my, my squash and my cucumbers are not only blossoming, but I ate my first one yesterday. And so it's all about the growth that's in there. And for us in the green season in the church, it's the same thing. <clears throat> St. Paul talks about that. He writes to the Corinthians. He says, look, some of you are saying, you know, I'm all about Paul. And others are saying, I'm all about Apollos. And others say, and I'm about the Christ, you know. And he says, is Christ divided? He said, come on. It doesn't really matter who you learned it from. It's that you know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so for us, too, uh, you know, I can think back to the first pastor that I remember was Pastor Shano and then Pastor Speakerman, who confirmed me and, and married me and Becky, and then other pastors as I've gone through my life to the point now where Pastor Woods is my pastor. He he preaches to me and I preach to him. But it's, you know, you've probably had half a dozen or more pastors in your life too. And you learn from each one because we're all different and we all have different, we see different facets in what we're teaching. But all together, it is, it is this opportunity to grow in the word because the word is what shows us Jesus and Jesus shows us God. And so it's all about growing. It's, it's a season of the year. It's, it feels long, but again, it's six months. It'll grow, and before we know it, we'll be at Advent again. We'll be into the next cycle. <coughs> Excuse me. But what we rejoice in is that we have opportunity to grow. We're going to grow because we're going to be pointed to Jesus. We're going to be pointed to his miracles. We're going to be pointed to his teachings. We're going to be pointed to those things whereby Jesus showed himself to be from God. And, you know, sadly, not everybody saw that. Even in his day, people who saw his miracles, experienced those miracles, they found other reasons for that. And others who sat at his feet and heard his teaching and then ended up rejecting him because he wasn't the Messiah they were looking for. He wasn't the, the one that they were hoping for. You know, there were a number of them who rejected Jesus because he, he didn't say, get rid of the Romans, you know, rebel. He didn't do that. He said, love the Lord your God. Love one another. Love even your enemies. For some, that was not a teaching they wanted to hear. And so you and I, you know, we're in this summer season. And we've, we saw the, the peach blossoms back in the spring. And then now the peaches are on the tree. And now pretty soon... You'll be harvesting. And that's the whole idea of the church, too, is that we grow so that there becomes a harvest at the end. That what the word was always intended for was to bring people to Christ and through Jesus then bring us to heaven. That'll be finally the, the final harvest. And so in this season, this uh, green season, this season of the year where we are learning, growing, and teaching, the whole aim is that we might bear fruit and bear fruit abundantly. So the green season is a good season. We'll get a little tired of green by the time we get into October. But that's all right. The following month we'll be back into blue, and then we'll be into white, and then we'll be into gold, and then we'll be into purple, and then we'll be back into white, and then comes green again. It is, it is the cycle in very much like farmers who plant, cultivate, harvest. They look forward to the next year of planting and cultivating and harvesting. The church sort of mirrors that. We're going to plant seeds. We're going to cultivate those. We're going to grow, hopefully with always the aim that we will bear rich and abundant fruit. 
So God bless you in that time of the year, in this growth time. God bless you in the green season. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we pray that during this green season, this these Sundays after Pentecost now, as we look and learn from Jesus, that we might grow. No, grow in our knowledge of you and of your ways, that we might grow in our understanding of who Jesus was and how Jesus was so that we might emulate him. Grant us growth. Grant us your grace. Help us to understand what it is you want us to know and to put it into practice. Lord, bless our loved ones and our families all. And we bring these things before you now as always in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we announced in church and put it in bulletin, we've got a um, little trip planned to Nashville, Tennessee, 23rd and 24th of August. It's just going to be one night. Um, going to leave about 9 in the morning. We're going to go down and catch the General Jackson showboat for lunch. Uh, later that evening, we will go to the, uh, Grand, the Opry, Mall, Opry Land Mall where you can catch some supper. And then at 7 o'clock, we're going to go to the Grand Old Opry. I don't know who's going to be performing. It doesn't really matter. It's always a great show. And then the next morning, uh, we'll leave Nashville on our way back. We're going to go to Kentucky Down Under, which is uh, a zoo. There's a, a cave that you can go down and, you know, go through the cave. Um, they've got kangaroos and wallabies, and they've got all kinds of other Australian animals and others. And so, and then we'll come on home. So it'll be basically two days and one night. And... Uh, Space is limited because we're taking the church bus. I'll drive. So we got room for 24, and when those are full, we're done. So God bless you, and uh, talk to you next week. Bye-bye.